This video tutorial is all about measuring lung volume. Throughout this tutorial, I'm going to introduce a piece of apparatus known as a spirometer, as well as some key terms that you need to be familiar with, um, including vital capacity, tidal volume, breathing rate, and oxygen uptake. Now, your vital capacity, um, so essentially um, the capacity of your lungs, the volume of air in your lungs that can be moved by your lungs in one breath is gonna depend on a whole number of different factors. Um, these factors include the size of a person, particularly their height, um, the age of the person, gender of the person, um, but also the levels of regular activity. And that's why I've put on the side in front of you an image of a female running up um, some stairs versus um, a female lying down on the ground. Obviously your levels of general activity are going to impact your vital capacity, which is one of the reasons why it is so important that you do lots of exercise. So here we have a spirometer. This is a diagram of a spirometer on the slide in front of you. Lung volumes can be measured using such a piece of apparatus. Um, the way that it does this is by measuring um, the movement of air in and out of the lungs um, as a person breathes. So you can see the person there, the subject, breathes in and out um, and um, it says until the oxygen's used up. Now this is a float chamber spirometer and it consists of a chamber of air or medical grade oxygen, as shown sort of on the diagram in front of you, floating on a tank of water. During inspiration, air is drawn from the chamber so that the lid will move down. And then during expiration, the air returns to the chamber and that's going to cause that lid to move up. And those movements, those kind of up and down movements that occur in this spirometer can then be recorded on a data logger. And that's shown as well on the diagram. So you've got the trace being drawn on that revolving drum as the lid is moving up and down. Carbon dioxide, rich air that's ex exhaled is then passed through a chamber um, which contains sodium soda lime. So we've got a canister there on the slide of soda lime um, and that's going to absorb the carbon dioxide in the exhaled air and we're going to use that um, to measure our oxygen consumption as we'll sort of discuss a little bit later in today's tutorial. When using apparatus like this um, there's a whole range of different sort of safety precautions that you need to be aware of. First of all, the subject must be healthy and in particular free from asthma. The soda lime should be fresh and functioning. There shouldn't be any leaks in the apparatus as this would give invalid or inaccurate results. The mouthpiece must be sterilised between each use and the water chamber um, shouldn't be overfilled or otherwise water might enter those um, air tubes. Modern spirometers um, can be significantly smaller than the one um, on the previous slide. So this one here that you're looking at now um, is just a simple handheld device and it can be used to record the movement of air in and out of the lungs. Um, the only sort of disadvantage here is that you can't measure the rate of oxygen consumption. On the slide in front of you now is a typical trace for a spirometer. Now it includes lots of the key terms that you need to be familiar with. The total lung capacity, which is labelled on the far left, consists of the vital capacity, which is shown there on the far right, as well as the residual volume. And that total lung capacity um, can be estimated using a spirometer, but only the vital capacity can actually be measured using the spirometer. We can't actually measure the residual volume using a spirometer. So the vital capacity is the maximum volume of air that can be moved by the lungs in a single breath. So the way that this is measured is getting um, the patient to take a really deep breath and then exhale all the air they possibly can from the lungs. And it's that vital capacity that's going to depend on the sort of age of the person, the gender of the person, the size of the person, the level of their activity. Vital capacity is usually in the region of 2.5 to 5 decimeter cubed. 
Um, but in trained athletes, such as Chris Froome, um, who's now shown on the slide in front of you, um, it can be significantly greater than that. So Chris Froome's lung capacity is, is quite extraordinary. His vital capacity is larger than five decimeter cubed. The residual volume, which um, on the spirometer trace on the slide is shown in that yellow band at the bottom, is the volume of air that remains in the lungs even after forced expiration. Now, there is always air remaining in the airways and in the alveoli, and that tends to be approximately kind of 1.5 decimeter cubed, although it's shown to be a little bit lower than that um, on the spirometer trace on that slide. Now, also labelled um, on this spirometer trace is tidal volume. That's in the blue band um, in the middle. Tidal volume is the volume of air moved in and out with each breath. So it's kind of like the normal resting breath volume. So a typical tidal volume at rest might be 0.5 decimeter cubed. That's usually the amount that's sufficient to supply all the oxygen that's required um, by your body at rest. This spirometer trace again just labels up these same um, sort of key terms. So total lung capacity being made up of the vital capacity and the residual volume. We've just come across the tidal volume. And you can also see labeled there things like the inspired um, inspiratory reserve as well as the um, expiratory reserve. So during breathing, um, it's all about supplying oxygen to your cells for respiration and removing carbon dioxide from your cells as a result of respiration. As a person breathes um, from the spirometer, oxygen is absorbed by the body and replaced by carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is then absorbed by the soda lime in that soda lime container, which again is shown um, on the slide in front of you now. So the carbon dioxide is absorbed by the soda lime in the spirometer so that the volume of the air in the chamber um, decreases. This decrease can be observed and measured on the spirometer trace. We can assume that the volume of carbon dioxide released and absorbed by the soda lime equals the volume of oxygen absorbed by the blood. Therefore, measuring the gradient of the decrease in volume enables us to calculate the rate of oxygen uptake. Now, here we have um, two diagrams just showing how we can calculate the oxygen uptake from a spirometer trace. So on the um, top graph, so graph A, um, a line has been drawn to point A, um, and then another line has been drawn to point B to the horizontal axis. And then um, the distance between these two points in terms of time has been measured as cal and calculated, as well as the uh, sort of difference between these two points in terms of um, the volume. So we've measured the volume to be 0.3 decimeter cubed and the time taken to be um, 55 seconds. So the rate of oxygen uptake shown on the trace A would be 0.3 divided by 55, which would give us 0.0055 decimeter cubed per second. The breathing rate can also be measured from a spirometer trace. So you just simply need to count the number of peaks in each minute, um, which usually, so the sort of breathing rate at rest is usually around um, 12 to 14 breaths per minute. Now what you calculate to be your oxygen uptake will often depend upon a number of factors. So a higher oxygen uptake will result from increased demand, such as during exercise when the muscles are respiring more. Um, increased oxygen uptake will also result from increased breathing rate um, and deeper breaths.